Hey there, just continuing with this particular kilt and this spot that's been stretched out uh, because the canvas wasn't taking the full tension and the tension was communicated to the cloth and the cloth had pulled out. Now I've just been soaking it with water with my spritzer and it seems the cloth seems to have shrunk a little bit by itself. So again, what I'm going to do, I'm not sure if this is going to work, I'm going to use, because we can see the the raised ridge. We have to reduce this in size because that's the stretch bit in the middle. Um, first, I'm going to try just using the bare iron because I need to see what we're doing. I'm doing this on the inside of the cloth because the great worry about an, using an iron on, on wool is that the surface will glaze and it'll get shiny, a shiny surface. Um, on the other hand, I'm, that's what I'm doing this on the inside so that should the surface become somewhat glazed, it won't be immediately apparent. So I'm just using the heat around the edge and I'm seeing a bit of glazing, but I am also seeing that it's shrinking to see the material is closing up there. So we may, we may have success here. I'm going to um, take a bit of a, well, not take a bit of a risk, but I'm going to go back to the usual method of the wet pressing cloth because with a wet cloth as long as I hear that steaming as long as I see the steam and this iron is like 10 pound iron and it's floating on a bed of steam it's like a hovercraft and as long as I hear that steam I know that the cloth isn't being hurt and furthermore if you do have wool that's been glazed from heat you can often steam it that way and that'll reduce the effect of the glaze. Now you can see it's working. I've managed to reduce that to a flat spot. We still have a bit of stretching here, but let's see if I can bring that down too. And I, and incidentally, I've spoken before of these old irons. They're absolutely the cat's whiskers because they're so superior to modern household irons, which are designed to be light which really makes no sense. I want a heavy iron. A heavy iron, it takes longer to heat up, but then it holds onto the heat. Look at that, almost complete success. There's just a little bit of stretching in the middle. I'm just gonna let that cool down for a bit. But yeah, these heavy old irons, you can get them on eBay, and you're probably gonna pay 10 times the cost of the iron in shipping, because they weigh a ton. <coughs> but the great thing is they haven't been overthought. They're heavy, they hold the heat for, for a long period, and best of all, they don't have some smart-ass electronics inside that goes, oh, you haven't used the iron for a while, I'll shut it off. No, I was waiting for you to heat up yet, so-and-so. Anyhow, <laughs> that's enough of that. That's, that's my official old guy rant for the day. But, with a little bit more ironing here, and we'll see what we got. And it looks like we've been successful. So I'm gonna put, I'm just gonna leave this here. I'm not gonna touch it because of course, wet and warm wool is, is elastic. It can be stretched out and we've just managed to shrink it together again. I'm just gonna let it sit here until it's completely dry. So that's the end of kilt making for this evening or for today. I've been at, the cl I've been at this for about 11, 11 and a half hours. So um, I'm gonna take a break, have a well-deserved pint friend of mine might drop by in a bit and then in the morning once it's cool and dry I'll start rebuilding the kilt. Thank you.